Oh, Father, we bless you. Oh, Father, we bless you. We bless you for that which you're doing. We bless you for that which you're not doing. We bless you for that which you're yet to do. As you speak to us this morning, Lord, speak to us clearly. Let your name be glorified and let your will be done. Take all the honor and glory today and forevermore. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Put your hands together for Jesus. It's always wonderful to be here. Thank you very much, Pastor Pete. God bless you. Thank you, my own fire. It's always good to be here. You know, when, when, we, when we pray, especially in a country like ours, you know, when we say, let God's will be done, it's, I don't think we understand how deep that statement is. Because, you know, Pastor King, when you say, let God's will be done, most of us have in our mind what God's will is in our own mind. So when we say, let God's will be done, is that thing that you want, you are saying is God's will? Am I making sense? It's a prayer. I, I don't pray that prayer many times because, you know, I'm, I plan a lot. So I have my own idea of what I want. <laughs> so when, because when you say, let God's will be done, you're saying, Lord, disregard my plans. That's what it means. But your will. But you know, as Christians, our total confidence is always Romans 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good. That's our confidence as Christians. Our confidence as Christians is Proverbs 16, 33, that the hand cast the lot on the lap, but the result thereof is of the Lord. Another version says, now man, they throw dice. Now God, they give double six. You know, so I want you to be calm. You know, all things will work together for our good in this country. You just have to believe that. You have to, you know, there'll be, there may be twists and turns. Twists and turns, but our confidence is that the horse is prepared for the day of battle. But victory is who? It's of the Lord. That Paul planted, Apollo water, but who gave increase? God. So let's go. We're preaching marriage today. We're not touching, we're not talking Nigeria. Pastor P, you know the, the mood is mood of Nigeria. <laughs> you know, but the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Praise the Lord, somebody. Making your marriage work. Making your marriage work. So I know that we've been speaking about the family throughout this month. And the reality is that everybody is in, is in different places here. So we have people that are married. We have people that are not married. We have people that maybe have challenges in their marriage. You know, so whoever you are, wherever you sit, you can take something from this. Are you with me? Making your marriage work. You know, I worry for the generation coming. And the children coming in the next generation, I worry. I worry, Pastor P, because the world will be so confused hmm, that... If you're not parenting well, and from what I see, Pastor Kingsley, there is little or no parenting again. So I worry. I'm really worried. I tell my wife, I worry for the next generation. I think parents are more focused on social media, on content for social media, on the clothes the children wear. The effort a parent spends on that, if you spent one tenth on changing your children's values, they'll be better. But they don't. So, when we were growing up, marriage was a relationship between a man and a woman. No controversy. But now, the children come in, they will see man and woman, man and man, woman and woman, man and animal, woman and animal. And if you're not taking time to let them know your values, that we are Christians, that we might be a minority, but we are right. We'll be lost. Three facts about marriage. One, marriage is God's idea, not man's idea. If you don't understand that, you'll be confused. And I think a lot of people are confused. That's why we have struggles in our marriages. You must understand that the idea of marriage 
did not come from the West, did not come from Africa, did not come from a bishop or a pope, did not come from a president, did not come from America, did not come from Europe, that marriage existed before America existed. <laughs> Am I making sense to you? When God conceived marriage, there was no Europe. So who gives them the right to tell us what marriage should be now? Fact two. Okay, so I said God is God, marriage is God's idea. And that is backed up by Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Male and female. Are you with me? So that's fact one. Fact two. For you to fully understand marriage, you must go to the product manual. You know, I don't know why we struggle with this. If you buy a phone and you want to use that phone well, really use it well, you want to use it to its fullest, what do you do? You read the product manual. All of us don't do it too. I don't do it. I buy a phone. I just put it on. I just find my way around it. That is how we're treating marriage. That's why we're struggling. That's why we don't get the best of marriage. Oh, we wing it. <laughs> we make it work. Pastor P, your phone, your iPad, you never read the manual, I'm sure. But you're making it work. That's what we're doing with marriage. We make it work. But we don't get the best. You know why? Because you and I don't take time to read the product manual. So we get 20%, 10% of what we should get. Fact two, if you fully, fully want to understand marriage, you need to go and read the product manual and say, what do you say about this product called marriage? How do I get the best of this product called what? Called marriage. Are we together? Fact three of a marriage. That marriage can only be fully beneficial and you can only get the total best of it if you commit to reading what? The product manual. Three facts about marriage. It's God's idea. If you want to understand marriage, go to the product manual. If you want to use marriage to 100%, if you are comfortable with your marriage being 10%, 15%, it's okay. But if you want to reach it to the full capacity, you must do what? You must read that manual. You must commit to reading that manual. When you find out that the phone is giving you a problem, what do you go to? Okay, which error is this? Error E425. You open the manual. Error E425. Husbands, love your wife. Error E672. You open it. Error E672. Wives, submit to your husband. Your own. I don't know if I'm making sense. Okay. There's a quote that I love very much and I use a lot. And that quote was, I don't know if Pastor P remembers that it was one that told me that quote. I don't know if you still remember Pastor P. He said, marriage is hard work. He said, but good marriage is very, very, very hard work. That if you want your marriage to work, it's hard work. If you want to really enjoy it, it's extreme hard work. I don't think we understand that it's hard work. Two people, different backgrounds, different socioeconomic status, different value system. Some polygamous family grew up. Another um, um, single mother, single father. You now bring them together into a small crucible that make it work. It's hard work. It's commitment. It's not easy. But if you are really to pay the price. You know, Pastor P, I like saying this quote. One of my favorite quotes. You don't earn a first class in your final year. You don't. Am I making sense? If you want to make your marriage work, <laughs> it is hard work. 
And I tell a lot of couples, I see them, when I counsel them, by the time I look at them, I know these, these girls are not ready for the work. They're not ready. You know, it's one thing to say with your mouth. <laughs> it's easy to say with your mouth, Pastor P, but the work that you need to do to make it work, I will show you. I don't know if I'm making sense. Brad, am I making sense? It's simple. Hard work. Marriage. You want to move from third class to first class? Oh, my God. You will walk. You will read. You will do tutorials. You won't sleep. You won't miss lectures. True of course. You will not miss any test. You will not miss any assessments. Your, your attendance is a must. Your best friends will be people that read. You will pick new friends. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. You will do what? Pick new friends. If your friends are clubbing friends, you say you want to move to first class, the first thing you do is to jettison the clubbing friends. True or false? You pick Ephicos. Abby? The ways, yes. That is, I'm telling you, my God, I'm telling you. So you say you want your marriage to work, but your best friends, they don't believe in marriage. I say that marriage thing is a, is, a, is a scam. And you say you want your marriage to work. To never work. It's not a curse. It's a fact. So if you want to make your marriage your first class, are you willing to pay the price for it? Because there's a benefit in having a fantastic marriage. You want to go home early every day. You want to see your children. Your wife treats you like a king in the house. You two treat your wife like a queen in the house. You are happy. You are gisting. People see that, wow, these guys, these guys are enjoying their marriage. They are not enjoying it. A lot of people are enjoying marriage. You know, and when they're giving you injection, and you don't want the pain to show. That's not what God expects of marriage. They're supposed to enjoy your marriage. Are you, am I making sense? So husbands, if you want your marriage to work, I will tell you three things or so you must do. Now I'll talk to the ladies. One, husbands, if you want your marriage to work, you must love. Simple. It's easy to say, but challenging to do. That's why scripture says husbands, do what? Love your wives. That love is a command. It's not a suggestion. It's a directive. Hmm. Praise the Lord, somebody. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Husbands, this is love. God is asking us to love our wives like this. If, you know, so if you love your wife, one, you will protect your wife. You know, I hear husbands where the wife is the one that, this one in the family will abuse the wife. That one in the family will call the wife. Well, well, I'm like, are you okay? Protect your wife. Put your chest there. My wife was, you know, they, no, 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 talk to me. Let her be behind you. You know, you don't turn your wife to the football of the family. And there's a pen. We're having a family guy. My wife, your wife should come. Come and do what? She a cook. Let's pay for Alassie now. Pay for Alassie. Protect your wife. If you love your wife, you will forgive your wife. Because she will make mistakes. She will hurt you. You will forgive her. Husbands, if you love your wife, you will be a number one fan. And my wife's number one fan. You will be supporting her every time. Even when she loses, you will support her. Even when she fails. I, I, I don't understand. We all support football clubs. When they beat them, don't you still support them? How much more your wife? 
if you love your wife, you are a number one fan. You are always cheering her on. That is love. You help her achieve her dreams if you love her. That's cheering on. It's not only your own dreams that matter in the family. Number four, under, if you love a wife, man, you will nurture her. Because when a man meets a woman, you meet a woman on three levels. Listen, you meet the woman you think she is. <laughs> We've all gone through that. The woman you what? You think she is. Everybody, you meet your wife, I think she's this. That's what you, that's what you meet. You meet the woman she actually is. Then the woman God wants her to be. So, your job as a husband is to help nurture that woman to be the woman that God wants her to be. And it's a lifelong thing. Praise the Lord, somebody. If you want your marriage to work, you submit. I know that word submit is being attacked in this feminist-driven world. And I say I'm a feminist. At least I have two wonderful daughters. So do I want my daughters not to have equal access to opportunities? But I understand that male and female are different, and they will always be different, and they will forever be different, because that's how God made it. So when I hear people attack marriage on the basis of submission, then your marriage can never work. Because the person that created marriage said, husbands love, wives submit. So if you want marriage to work, the way God thought it up, oh my God, you must submit. Submission is done willingly. The wife agrees to submit. So when people say, why must the wife submit? I said, because you choose the person to submit to. <laughs> so women, never marry a man you can't submit to. A woman that doesn't honor and respect her husband can never make her marriage work. It can, listen, it will never, I don't care, it will never work. That is the way God ordained it. And that is the makeup of a man. It doesn't work. Any woman that wants her marriage to work, you must submit by helping him. The Bible says you are a helpmate. You help him. You help him with your skill sets. That some women are fantastic accountants, fantastic organizers, and your husband is disorganized. There's something wrong. Because that skill you have is supposed to help your husband too. You help him. You don't wait for him to fail before you help him. Say, so let him fail first. When he comes back, I'll tell him. You see? Yeah, come, let me help you. He will say, keep your help. I'll do it again. Am I making sense? You help him with your skills, your ideas, your resources. You help him achieve his dreams. Genesis 2, verse 18. The, and the Lord said, It's not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. The primary assignment of a wife to her husband is to help him. That's what the Bible says, not me. The Bible. When you submit to your husband, you learn to forgive him when he makes mistakes, but he will make mistakes. Both of you will hurt yourself sometimes. Both of you will disappoint yourself sometimes. Praise the Lord, somebody. Colossians 3.13 Bear with one another, if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. So wife, submission is key. Oh, if you want to make your marriage work, submission is key. Proverbs 14.1 A woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it apart with her own hands. Six things you need to do 
so that you don't destroy your marriages. So even as your marriage is going on, there are things that can make you destroy your marriage quickly. One, unwise friendships. Run from unwise friendships. A lot of marriages are being destroyed today because the friendship the husband or the wife has is not helping your marriage. Break it. Do not be deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. He that walks with the wise will be wise, but the companion of destroyed. Proverbs 13, 20. Number two, sickness can kill marriage. Sickness can kill marriage. That's why husband and wife, you must pray together. Sickness is not good. It destroys marriages. The husband gets sick, long-term sickness is not good. The wife gets sick, long-term, ah, it destroys marriages. So you need to pray. Number three, unbridled tongue. Watch the way you talk to yourselves. Husbands and wives that abuse themselves, what are you awake? You're not aware. You walk, and you're married. How? There's some things you must never say to yourselves. Number four, unrealistic expectations. It kills marriages. Unrealistic expectations kills marriages. Don't put yourself under too much pressure, husband and wife. Number five, financial problems kills marriages. And I found out that a lot of the financial problems we have in marriages that we create them ourselves. Every couple must go and do finance 101. Basic thing about finance, you must save. Never spend everything, the Joseph principle. Joseph said there will be seven years of plenty. There will be seven years of famine. He said in times of plenty, we will save for the time of famine. As long as we're on earth, there will be times of plenty, there will be times of famine. No family goes through plenty throughout. Am I wrong, Pastor Pisa? It can never happen. So when you have plenty, use your sense. Put something aside. Number six. Final one, yes. Number six. One of the things you must afford is isolation in marriage. Never isolate yourselves, husband and wife. Things are not going wrong, you isolate yourself. Stop coming to church, you stop mixing, you don't share with people. You must share with people. And then said everybody. Look for people that you know are mature enough that can help you through that process in life. One of the ways the devil destroys you is to isolate you first. So as a roundup, and from ladies, be careful. When you meet a man, be careful with the man that tries to break all your relationships. Very careful. Try to say, don't this one, don't this one. Ah. It's all part of isolating you so he can control you. Yes. You must have connections, you must have relationships. Praise the love somebody. I leave you with, in conclusion, in marriage, if you don't work it out, it won't work. You can't wish it away. If you don't work it out, it won't work. Some people don't want to work it out, but they want it to work. So remember, if you really want your marriage to work, carefully put in the hard work. This, can, this cannot be done by one party. Both parties must be willing to pay the price. God bless you. I hope you can practice these things in Jesus' name.